Gemini Singles, welcome. It's your November Singles read, the Meet the Soulmate read. This is an always positive read. Um, it's always positive because I'm simply asking who's the right one for you. So it's about as uh, the least triggery read I think as you could get. Um, so if you see a three of swords pop up or something, always remember no one's breaking up with you. I'm going to put a link below here in the description and of course it's on my page uh, to the soul family collective daily read if you'd like please do check it out it's um think of terence mckenna if you know him find the others um to so just see if it resonates more along the lines of uh, spirituality manifestation um than strictly uh, romantic love which this primarily is also do the heart spreads normally every tuesday i apologize for being a day late been sick here physically you know, and energetically I decided you know, I'm not going to fight uh, to really catch up I'm just going to run a day late for a minute until I kind of can naturally kind of catch up because I don't want to push a bunch of readings uh, you know energetically um, so this is for the whole November time frame it's kind of my biggest reading of the month and I'm simply looking to describe your person here with spirits help I look at their emotional intellectual sexual love and core value and lifestyle aspects of their personality uh, i do look for aspects of personality behavior uh, stories they might tell personal history i do pull astrology my goal is to in this purely predictive read uh, it's not meant to be someone you know someone that's going to be coming into your life in the near future november is the time frame um, but you'll just be able to uh, know them um, by the time I'm done with this reading so that when you meet them you go ah oh, that's that person uh, and uh, this is not meant to be someone that's perfect uh, they're perfect for you who's the perfect one for you and your soul grow who does spirit have that's our question thank you spirit I have much IT it's very peaceful here in our new Cancun apartment on the edge of the big uh, central park here they call it literally and um, very peaceful thank you now let's get going with this ace of cups wow this is in their emotional nature you're gonna have ace of cups over the tower interesting combination there um let's go do the intellectual as well we're gonna have the eight of cups over the four of swords now think about this so in the emotional column I see the moon um, energy as well with this person we look at their childhood stuff um, kind of generally how, how they are emotionally um, that's something that might not be as obvious in the second column in the intellect we see the Sun um, energy um, and I see more about their personality and behavior and how they might look to other people, they might like present themselves to the world. You know, it's a it's a water moon here. I just feel like it's a cancer moon. I mean, that's your premier moon. Cancer's um I have cancer moon. I'm not just saying because I do, but you know, it's at home there. It is the fourth house. The moon uh, you know only rules the fourth house. Only rules cancer. So, I kind of tell you a lot what goes with that. But look for that, put that together into their um, astrological um, package. We'll get the Venus and Mars as well, time we're done. I think we're going to have here also a water, um, a water sun. And I think this is a Scorpio sun person that we're dealing with here um, Gemini's Scorpio Sun um, with a cancer moon so someone that's very emotional and you know they've got the, also up top it's kind of the conscious below kind of the unconscious as we read just eight cards um, with the tower and the four swords um, they had a dramatic event in childhood that really impacted them 
this could have been, if not a sickness, something that isolated them, um, something that left them in a period uh, where they had to become a, more internal, um, and it was traumatic, it's something they didn't want. Uh, a hospitalization, they may tell you a story. Something happened and I had to be hospitalized for four months and I didn't go to school or I couldn't go play, um, something like that. I mean, I think generally speaking, they have a pretty good childhood. I see with this Ace of Cups that they had, they may have only had one parent, and but whoever raised them, it gave them a lot of love and they gener genuinely have a sense of self-esteem and self-worth that comes uh, from being raised uh, by a parent um, that was uh, emotionally self-aware, emotionally uh, mature, emotionally intelligent, and uh, emotionally uh, responsible and available um, to their child here. And so this event, I think they could talk about this, particularly if you ask, um, but the impact on it wouldn't be as severe as it perhaps would sound. Let's look at their sexual nature. Eight of Wands. Here I usually see the Venus and here the Mars, King of Swords with our Scorpio personality. When we look at their lifestyle core values, the Five of Cups. And the Two of Swords finishing. Five of Cups over the Two of Swords. Yeah, you know, they have a theme in their life uh, with the tower. Uh, something in their natal chart is going to be indicated. Um, some kind of, I'm trying to think of what it would be with their with Uranus. Um, is going to be like natally really tight square to their ascendant to uh, one of the angles. Um, possibly, I, because of the Five of Cups and the Two of Swords, I think it's to their midheaven, their MC, their career in public image, or possibly more likely than their, other than that, the AC, uh, the ascendant, their self, their body, okay, their first house of self. Um, and it probably, you know, this, whatever happened to them in childhood, if you ask them, it, you know, things keep happening like that, like, you know, uh, hurricanes come and blow down the houses they just buy and um, just things could happen they they get a great job and it's the perfect job and then the company they, nobody realized it but they were and they bankrupt and then they're you know destitute and um, they probably had this repeat for them through their whole lives and I bet anything it's around you're in this transit you know um, and it's very sensitive anyway. And that's all karmic. There would be an overall theme for this person in their life if you ask them. And uh, they would probably be aware of it. It's, they're very mostly self-aware, I think. They, they got that from their parent. From their parent. Um, you know, where um, they have just grown over their entire life. Um, and um, become emotionally um, more and more self-contained, uh, masterful of their emotions. Uh, because like each of these Uranus things, uh, each of these uh, towers that come for them, when things fall apart, it throws them back into the same four swords energy. And um, so they've learned to like self-soothe um, and you could, Keep that even in childhood, they may have uh, in some way had to self soothe. Um, and I actually see that too with the Four of Swords and the King of Swords. You notice they're both in the same position. The King of Swords, he's very kind of rigid and strong. So. Believe it or not, I think that's a Libra Mars, this King of Swords. Because if they're Scorpio's son, but this Libra Mars would always be wanting to keep things balanced and even. 
it might be with them I'm not saying they're perfect just saying they're the one that's right for you um, you know some sense that you know who am I to to not make sure that everyone else is happy <laughs> who am I to not take actions to make sure that everyone else is happy um, And the Eight of Wands is surely a Sagittarius Venus. You know, you can almost, with the Eight of Wands, you can almost feel the hoofbeats pounding as their horses are racing along. So you can see the Venus is in a bit of conflict um, with the Mars. Because the one thing about a Venus and Scorpio, um, they really do, you know, there's a thing about, say, oh, we want freedom, we want freedom. It, it's not quite like that. Um, but when you stick Sagittarius and Venus, yeah, it's like that. It's totally like that. They are the Sagittarius that want freedom. And the thing about it is, I mean, they'll give it to other people easily, too. Um, but they would be particularly drawn to relationships um, and, you know, willing to look for ways to compromise and to find balance, you know. Um, and so I don't really see this as a person necessarily had a lot of relationships. I don't think these towers that they're experiencing are necessarily relationships. Relationships may be affected. But I see them with the Five of Cups and the Two of Swords. It's like each time they're knocked down, you know, they go through a period. Um, they're not sad, you know, we bounce back fast. They're Scorpios, they gotta take a minute. Um, and they're probably not gonna make a big deal out of it, but they're feeling it inside. Um, and then they think their way through it and they make a decision. And it's sort of like they take, again, the self-soothing, a little bit of the self-soothing, it's like, um, you know, they go inside themselves and they just sort of like very much similar to the Four Swords, you know. Um, there's someone that would just really completely take responsibility. Like if you said to them, "What? oh my God, you, I heard you lost your job and, um, and at the same time that you got this health problem and uh, it must be really hard, are you all right? And you're like, no, I've, I've got it. I'm, I'm working on it, you know. Yeah, it's tough, but I got it. Yeah. So we have a Cancer moon, a Scorpio sun. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Libra Mercury there with the four of swords. That, that feels Libra to me. And Mercury would be there. Um, and... We have the Libra, Mars, and the Venus in Sagittarius here. So let me know what you think of this, guys. This is, again, a predictive read. If you run into this person sometime this month, take a minute to get back to this reading and say, Hey, Dave, uh, yeah, I found him. Let me know. Thank you.